Today we're going to talk about how to build a custom automated call center analytic solution all in AWS. For the keen observer, you will identify that this architecture can be used to extract features from any interactions that come through your call center, but we will use as a pedagogical device how to retrofit this solution to the quality assurance use case. Regulators today require that 5% of all call, call volumes are pushed through quality assurance uh, processes. So we were faced with a problem where our client received and made around about 10 million calls per annum. With regulatory requirements requiring that 5% of call volumes are put through quality assurance processes, this means that for a single person, it would take 85 days to listen to just one day's worth of calls. We've built a solution that you can not only be compliant, but you can start scaling to 100% of all call volumes and start being a pioneer in your industry. Who are we that we're not phased by a difficult problem like this? We are synthesis. And instead of being phased by difficult problems, we're excited by them. And we've been doing this for quite a long time. For more than 25 years now, we've been a local success story in South Africa. We've built a product that can, with 98% accuracy, parse through the interactions between your agents and your clients to identify whether or not your agents are compliant. Being able to process the interactions your agents are having with your clients protects you from legal risk as well as circumvents non-compliance fines and penalties. How do we build this solution? We're going to be using a whole list of AWS services as well as Salesforce. When the client is in the queue while they wait for their agent, they are prompted to input their ID number or some way of authenticating themselves up front. This pre-populates their case in Salesforce and we already have made metadata on this case. As the interaction occurs with the client, that call is automatically recorded due to the way Amazon Connect is built. After this call is concluded, that recording is stored in an S3 bucket. Now this happens over the course of the day and a number of calls are aggregated into this S3 bucket. This entire architecture is set to a schedule. For, this, for our South African client, we've set the schedule to be a daily run. But based on your business use case, you might change the schedule. Let's assume that we have a daily run. At the end of the day, our pipeline is set into motion by copying over the recordings from Connect's data repository into the inference pipeline's data repository and linking that with the metadata which is automatically stored by Amazon Connect and the CRM data from Salesforce. And the first thing that happens from here on out is that we use SQS to queue transcription jobs using Amazon Transcribe as our speech-to-text engine. Now, apart from speech-to-text and transcription capabilities, Transcribe also has the capability of speaker diarization this means it identifies the different speakers in a conversation so that we can separate out those into different channels. This might be useful if you, for example, do not have sign-off from business to process the language spoken by your clients due to the Poppy Act and so forth and data privacy issues. And in the case of quality assurance, we actually only care about the agent side of the conversation. Now, as this conversation is transcribed, we, from the raw audio data, we receive a text form of that data. Once transcription is completed, the text version of this conversation is then copied to a different data repository where it sits and waits for the inference pipeline to be kicked off. Now the inference pipeline is a very significant component in this architecture because as I said earlier, this architecture can be retrofitted to any business use case. And when you want to retrofit this to a different use case, the inference pipeline or inference component is the only one that you need to change. And we'll go into a bit more detail into what is inside this component. But for now, let's understand that text goes into the inference pipeline, a model output is generated inside the component, we apply a business rule, and that gives us the form of the data from which we can derive value. The next bit is very important since we have artificial intelligence ingrained into the solution. As we know, AI models are a reflection of what we understand at the time when the model was built. If our behavior changes and this isn't reflected in the model, that model's usefulness deteriorates over time. To fight this concept called model drift, we introduce a human in the loop component which means in the post-processing after we have output from the model, a sample of this data is sent to a human review task. Now, the work of your manual QA team doesn't 
cease to exist with an automated solution like this, but it does change. The job of the manual QA team then becomes to review the model output for two main reasons. Firstly, it gives us an up-to-date, honest assessment of how well the model is performing. And secondly, it serves as a retraining feed loop, feedback loop. It means that every day as new data is pushed through the model, a sample of that is reviewed by a human team and pushed back into the model for retraining. This ensures that over time the, model, the model's performance improves and we fight model drift as our beliefs are updated based on what is actually happening in practice. Now, at this point, we have some data from the model and we have some data from the human in the loop component, as well as the metadata from way back in the beginning of the pipeline. These three components of data are then put together and fed into an analytics dashboard component. This serves as the front end of the solution and this is where we derive the actual value from. In short, what goes into the solution architecture is the raw audio data. That is transcribed to text, we get a model output, we apply our business rule, which reflects our business need, and we come to get to a place where we have the raw data as well as the CRM data with a couple of, let's call them columns or features added to that. So we get to a point where we can say, I know that employee A was in a conversation with customer B where they discussed product C, and if that customer had any compliments or complaints, we would know exactly what that compliment or complaint was. And we can also say whether or not the bank was compliant. And if they were not compliant, we have access to the data at, at a level of granularity that we can say, you should have said this, but you actually said this. So that gives you a tool to remediate and get your agents to comply. Earlier, we spoke about how the only component that you need to change to retrofit this to a different business use case is the inference component. Now, the inference component comprises of three separate parts, the pre-processing, the inference, and the post-processing. The inference and the pre-processing component go hand in hand because the pre-processing component prepares the data for the model that, you, that does what you want it to do. The inference component contains what's called a transformer model. Now, back in 2017, a seminal research paper was published called Attention is All You Need. In this paper, the researchers introduced a model architecture called the transformer model. And most of the value of this solution is enabled by two concepts. It's the transformer model and the direction in which the research community and around NLP has been moving and introduced the concept of transfer learning. Now, to train a transformer model like this to be able to understand language takes a vast amount of data and computation resources. But due to the direction the research community has taken, these large models are being trained on most of the text on the internet, and these pre-trained weights are then uploaded to the internet for free use. So how we train a model like this to do what we wanted to do is we use a pre-trained model which was trained in a non-specific way simply to understand language and we put on the end of that architecture a layer that does what we want it to do something that we can derive value from in the quality assurance case that means we use we use its pre-trained language understanding and we exploit that in what's called transfer learning to start identifying a list of compliance phrases that we expect our, uh, our agents to utter to our clients. If, for example, your use case is something like product sentiment, where you want to know what your clients think about certain products, you would just simply use a different, what's called a classification layer at the end of this architecture, instead of trying to find your compliance phrases. Now, to be specific, we don't use the vanilla version of the transformer model. We use an encoder only architecture which gives us a language agnostic numeric representation of the language that, that, that's fed to the model. For some other use case, you might want to use a different variant of this model. If you want text output, let's say you want to summarize a conversation that was had with the client, you would use an encoder decoder stack of this transform model architecture. The post-processing component that comes after the inference component, which houses the model, is where we apply the business rule. This is where we take the num that numeric language agnostic representation of the language and we bend it in some way that we can 
extract business value from it. In the case of quality assurance, how we apply this business rule is we have the model produce what is called a semantic similarity score. This is then used as a sort of probability that a certain compliance phrase was spoken. By applying the business rule of saying, if the probability of a phrase occurring is at least 50%, we make the decision that we take that to be true, meaning that the phrase was found. And if it's below 50%, we say that phrase was in fact not found and that part of the conversation probably was not compliant. As is the case with all automation and AI projects, we encountered some obstacles and some speed bumps, but we were made wiser by each of them. Firstly, process mapping is almost always worse than you think. What we mean by this is that if you speak to management to find out what people on the floor are actually doing, you might not get an accurate picture of what that process looks like. To automate a manual process, you need to speak to the actual people who are facilitating this process because that process needs to be captured and needs to be embedded into the architecture. The second learning was that the tight coupling and integration with which Salesforce and Amazon Connect are built makes the solution a lot more powerful. Now it is possible to build integration for any other CRM platform. Maybe you have some on-prem um, proprietary system and we can, we can build an integration to, to use that data. But the way in which Amazon Connect and Salesforce are built makes this a lot simpler and you get to link your, data, your metadata with your calls with almost no uncertainty. Whereas with a proprietary system, you need to be okay with some level of uncertainty because that strong link just doesn't exist. Now the third learning and obstacle that we identified is something that if you have any experience with machine learning or AI is a known problem. To get a, a model to do something very specific. You need those specific examples of how to do what you're expecting it to do. So a large batch of labeled or annotated data is required to get this model up and running. Luckily, it's been a problem for long enough that very convenient solutions have been built for this. Now, you can take one of two approaches. Either you could use a third-party data annotation service, or you could use one of the open source or paid for services to label this data yourself. In our case, what ended up being a very powerful approach to this was to use the, act, the manual team that would end up doing the human review and the human loop component to use them to do the data annotation. That way, they already are sort of trained to know what this solution is going to do and what this data is going to end up looking like. As we said earlier, this architecture can not only be used for quality assurance, but there are multiple use cases. Essentially, if you can formulate a business need into a classification rule, you can use this architecture. Some of the use cases that we've identified include something like call center capacity. Now for this, you don't actually need another AI model because of the way that Amazon Connect is set up. It captures a whole bunch of data that is already useful. Things like how long did a call last for? How much silence was there in a call? How many times are customers calling the wrong number and they have to be transferred to the right queue? These things already help you with resource allocation to optimize what happens in your call center. Now, the next use case that we've identified is understanding intent. Why are your clients calling? And are they calling with some form of alignment? Are they calling regarding a product? Do they more often call with service requests? And are they satisfied with the, with the service that your agents are providing. Now, the third use case personally is very uh, exciting to me because I don't think it has been done in the industry yet. So it's something we call product sentiment or clustering. Now, what this means is we can build an architecture similar to the one that we presented here that can give you an idea of what your clients think of your products and how are your products related to one another according to your clients. The way we were able to do this is we use the transformer model to give us this language agnostic numeric representation of what's said and we cast it to the same vector space. Because of the standardized way this data is then represented, we can use a simple distance function that can tell us how similar or how different the opinions of your clients regarding these products are. And it gives us a very nice visual representation of what your clients think of your products. Another use case that we've identified is building a semantic search engine. What this means is that you can index all of your conversations that your clients are, being, are having with your agents. 
And let's say in the situation of an audit, you can readily find all of the conversations that were had regarding a certain product or regarding a certain opinion that was had by one of your clients. This could be used for exploratory data analyses or, as I said, in the case of an audit. But the most useful component of all of this is the fact that this architecture and the pipelines within this architecture are reusable. If you can formulate your business need into a business rule, you can use this architecture to derive that value from the conversations your agents are having with your clients.